Greetings and welcome to Black Talk Radio, where black radio stations matter and black lives definitely matter. Today is Thursday, March 29, 2018. Today, I'm doing a video of something I've been wanting to do for quite some time. Today's video, we're doing Negroes with Guns by Robert F. Williams. Negroes with Guns is one of the most telling and important documents of the African American or black freedom struggle. This book influenced a generation of young black insurgents and helped to lay the groundwork for the black power movement. Negroes with Guns fascinated people like Huey P. Newton and became the most important intellectual influence on the Black Panther Party for self-defense in Oakland, California. A play based on Negroes with Guns, Frank Greenwood's quote, If We Must Live, ran in community theaters in the Watts section of Los Angeles for six months in 1965 to standing ovations from eager crowds. It is important to be clear that Williams advocated self-defense, not aggression. He reminded the nation that when African American militants protect their people, they are not introducing violence, they are combating it. So before I continue, let me just share a few pictures. This is Robert Williams' picture here. This is the man who spearheaded Negroes with guns. This picture here is of Robert Williams with his wife Mabel Williams as he is coaching his wife on firearm use and also gun safety. And in this picture here, he is in the living room of a friend as he goes over gun use and gun safety with some of his fellow members of their um, organization. But anyways, as I continue, these pictures will continuously scroll, scroll through. I just wanted to give you a tidbit of what they, of who they are and what they mean. Anyways, as I pointed out, I just want to say is again how important it is to be clear that Robert Williams advocated self-defense and not aggression. Just to be clear, because there's some people who like to twist things and turn things around into being something else when it is not. Anyways, he also pointed out that when people say that they are opposed to black people resorting to violence, what they really mean is that they are opposed to Negroes defending themselves and challenging white supremacy and the exclusive monopoly of violence practiced by white racists. You see, he saw the difference. Well, as Negroes with guns went to press, legal victories had produced only a wave of white terrorism, a smattering of token concessions, and a host of elaborate evasions of the law Nonviolent direct action had little to show for all the brutality it had unleashed on its opponents. When people are subjected to unrelenting violence by organized citizens and their government collaborators, what resource or what, what recourse rather do they have? Since the city officials wouldn't stop the Klan, we decided to stop the Klan ourselves. There was no such thing as a 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution in Monroe, North Carolina. I'm sorry, Monroe, North Carolina. I'm sorry, family, for that. I was thinking of Monroe in um, Ethiopia, but my bad. That's Monroe, North Carolina. Quote, there is no fourth, 14th Amendment in this social jungle called Dixie, unquote, Williams declared. Quote, there is no equal protection under the law. We as men should stand up as men and protect our women and children, Williams declared. I am a man and I will walk upright as a man should. I will not crawl. Unquote. 
Since the Justice Department, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and local enforcers refused to provide protection while surreptitiously supporting and enabling the perpetrators of violence, the Monroe black community had no alternate alternative but to arm itself and fight back. When black men organized armed defense teams and returned fire, the racist mobs lost their nerve. Confirming the cowardice inherent in mob mentality, Williams concluded that racists who might ruthlessly destroy a community if they alone have weapons will cease fighting when they discover that blacks are armed for they find it impossible to stomach the thought of violence if their lives are at risk. When an oppressed people show a willingness to defend themselves, the enemy, who is a moral weakling and coward, is more willing to grant concessions and work for a respectable compromise. Williams was always careful to endorse methods espoused by King. Williams made the case for flexibility, quote, Nonviolence is a very potent weapon when the opponent is civilized but nonviolence is no repellent for sadists. That is why 100 years after the Civil War began, we Negroes in Monroe armed ourselves in self-defense and used our weapons. We showed that our policy worked. The lawful authorities of Monroe and North Carolina acted to enforce order. Only after and as a direct result of being armed, Previously, they had connived with the KKK in the racist violence against our people. Self-defense prevented bloodshed and forced the law to establish order. This is the meaning of Monroe, and I believe it marks a historic change in the life of my people. This is the story of that change. The contrast between the results of their policy and the results of our policy of self-defense is a dramatic object lesson for all Negroes. But before I go on to that, I have to describe how our policy of self-defense developed and how the Negro community in Monroe came to support my conclusion that we had to meet violence with violence. Since the city officials wouldn't stop the Klan, we decided to stop the Klan ourselves. There is no such thing as the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution in Monroe, North Carolina. We appealed to President Eisenhower, but we never received a reply to our telegrams. There was no response at all from Washington. I wrote to the National Rifle Association, NRA, in Washington, which encourages veterans to keep in shape to defend their native land and asked for a charter, which we got. So we started arming ourselves. The Klan discovered we were arming and guarding our community. We shot it out with the Klan and repelled their attack, and the Klan didn't have any more stomach for this type of fight. They stopped raiding our community. After the class, the same city officials who said the Klan had a constitutional right to organize met in an emergency session and passed a city ordinance banning the Klan from Monroe without a special permit from the police chief. So you see, it took the actions of black people for righteousness to prevail. Again, I want to repeat, it took the actions the actions of black people for righteousness to prevail. Let's continue. He goes on to say, Our fight occurred two weeks before the famous clash between the Indians and the Klan. We had driven the Klan out of our county into the Indian Territory. The national press played up the Indian Klan fight because they didn't consider this a great threat. The Indians are a tiny minority and people could laugh at the incident as a sentimental joke. But 
no one wanted Negroes to get the impression that this was an accepted way to deal with the Klan. So the white press maintained a complete blackout about the Monroe fight. So you see, when black folks were winning, the white press stayed silent so that other black people would not get the message. Hmm. As Robert Williams' funeral, I'm sorry, at Robert Williams' funeral in Monroe, North Carolina, on November 22nd, 1996, Mrs. Rosa Park Parks told the congregation that she and those who marched with Martin Luther King Jr. in Alabama had always admired Robert, Robert Williams for his courage and his commitment to freedom. The work that he did should go down in history and never be forgotten. Lastly, during slavery times, there was a secret black organization called the Knights of Liberty, founded by Moses Dixon, who was born free in Cincinnati, Ohio in 1824. His, organization, his organization's plan was to destroy the institution of slavery quickly and by any means. The Knights helped hundreds of blacks escape slavery, find quasi-freedom in the North. The Knights of Liberty was dissolved shortly before the Civil War started. It was remembered, however, by several names, including the Knights of Tabor or the Black Knights. The word Tabor had special meaning, referring to a place in the Bible where the Israelite army beat the Canaanite army. During the black civil rights movements of the 1950s and 1960s, while blacks were declaring themselves nonviolent, violence against them, especially in the South, was rampant. I'll repeat that again. During the 1950s and 60s, while blacks were declaring themselves nonviolent, violence against them, especially in the South, was rampant. One group of World War II and Korean War veterans did not accept the nonviolent, turn the other cheek philosophy, and organized into a protect protective group called the Deacons for Defense and Justice. Their primary goal was to combat Ku Klux Klan violence against blacks. The Deacons earned a special place of honor in black history for the initiatives they took to protect members of their community. I'm going to end this video here, but I want to share a couple more pictures showing Robert Williams with his wife in his last days before he died. But I want to let you know that this information came from the source of Black Reader's History, 101 Questions You Never Thought to Ask by Dr. Claude Anderson. Also, um, I did use some information from there, but nonetheless, the majority of this information I'm sharing with you, I actually read in the book, Negroes with Guns. I'm also aware that several months back, the um, so-called law enforcement, if that's what you want to call them, because it's not about righteousness at all, um, they arrested a black man and uh, targeted him as a uh, black identity extremist, and they cited the fact that he had this book, Negroes with Guns, in his possession. I find that appalling that white people in the 21st century are still trying to charge black men for trying to get an education and read a human right. In other words, they are violating, once again, our human rights. I wanted to share this um, story with you because I think it's important. I believe I've heard it from several people here recently. Robert Williams' name come up. I'm not going to, um, uh, they know who they are, who brought, it, brought him up. But since I read this book, I wanted to share with you some of the ideas that I got from that book. And that's where this video comes from. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Black Talk Radio. Thanks for joining. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out. And again, I'm going to share a few more pictures with you of Robert Williams and his wife before ending the video.